for being here today. Um, the topic of this keynote was going to be leveraging blockchains. But in preparing for today, I looked at the speaker lineup and noticed that there weren't many operating officers on the docket. Um, we typically don't get to leave the office very often. Um, so what better opportunity to speak to a room of industry colleagues and investors about the increasing sophistication of crypto company operations and how that is changing the risk profile of crypto investing. So before we explore that topic, I'd like to tell you a little about SALT and what we've been working on the past year. SALT is a Denver-based technology company focused on crypto lending. Our biggest strength is our team. Uh, we are a 70-person team of world-class blockchain engineers and a collective of the best in banking, consulting, lending, security, and technology. And we set out to solve a problem for crypto holders, a lack of market opportunity to leverage crypto assets. Prior to 2017, you could have a net worth of millions through your crypto holdings, but you could not leverage that wealth to buy a house or grow your business because crypto assets were not recognized by traditional financial institutions. SALT was the first US-based company to offer credit solutions for crypto holders. This solution is a crypto secured loan, which enable crypto holders to put up their Bitcoin or Ether as collateral for a US dollar term loan. And over time, we've added support for Litecoin and Doge, and then we added stablecoin collaterals to allow a borrower to cure their loan to value ratios with USDC and true USC. And as of this week, as of today actually, we are now supporting Dash. For payout and payment currency, we realized that many of our customers sought loans to either buy more of the crypto they were holding or hedge their long position. So to make it more convenient to move funds directly to and from exchanges, um, as of now, uh, we support both loan payouts and payments in stablecoin. This option also reduces the complexity of payments for our international borrowers. In bringing our product to market, we took the arduous route of obtaining our own lending licenses. And we are now able to originate and service loans in 45 US jurisdictions, including California, and 11 international jurisdictions, our newest additions being Canada and Australia. We're extremely proud of the customer experience we've built for our customers. Our product and design team have created a feature-rich portal and a mobile app experience that allows borrowers to proactively monitor their loan health and stay ahead of market volatility through real-time notifications of changes in collateral value. Our current loan book yields returns ranging from six to 10%. Our loan-to-value monitoring technology and supporting processes have all but eliminated the need for risk premiums in investor returns. In our performance and over 18 months of servicing loans, we have made the lender whole every time. Okay, so uh, a couple of things we've been working on, new products that we'd like to announce today, and uh, we'll have more to share at Consensus next month. So the first thing, um, you know, we heard from several of our business customers that they wanted the ability to extend access to their fellow owners and team members, um, some even requiring it as part of their uh, company risk and compliance rules. So without this capability, one individual essentially had unilateral control to manage the account or move funds. So in response to this, and in working towards building financial solutions for both individuals and institutions, we are pleased to announce that our business accounts now support multi-user access and fund management capabilities. Um, the next announcement is one we're excited about. It's our Dash Masternode loan product. This product is the first of its kind and meets a need that is unique to our industry. At a high level, uh, masternodes are servers that improve the performance of certain blockchains. For transactions verified by a masternode, the owner earns a payout. Um, there's setup and maintenance costs associated with running a masternode, um, and Dash masternodes on average yield an ROI of approximately 7.5%. Masternode owners also have voting rights, and these voting rights help guide the direction of the Dash project. So we're excited to offer Dash Masternode owners the ability to maintain their voting rights and continue to earn passive income while their Dash is pledged as loan collateral. And the result is actually a potential for a net positive cost of borrowing. 
And lastly, um, so as a vital component of our loan business, we have built a secure and performant custody program. So we are announcing today that custody services are now available to everyone, not just our borrowers. Um, and there, there are a few reasons why we're doing this, but here are a couple. So the first is because we have confidence via our track record of performance and our CSS compliant practices that our custody program rivals anyone's. Um, and the second is that our industry needs asset storage diversification. The risk of consolidated wealth with only a few custodians and exchanges is too high at this point in our industry maturity. We believe that more options and more competition are necessary to diversify risk and continue to drive innovation and custody solutions. Okay, now that we're properly introduced, um, I'd like to take the remainder of our time to provide an operations perspective on the current state of industry maturity. So being a part of this industry, and I'm, I'm sure you guys get asked this question, but I often get asked whether it's by former colleagues or people I meet at social events or even my dad, <laughs> Why do people invest in crypto? It seems awfully risky. And they're not wrong, right? Um, crypto risk investing is risky, but it's a different kind of risky than I think it was even two years ago at the height of the market cap in 2017. Everyone in this room is aware of this, but it's worth saying, crypto by its nature is a volatile asset. Its volatility isn't correlated to the performance of any other asset class. It doesn't move with fiat inflation, it doesn't move inversely to commodities, and it's not tied to the performance of a company like a security. It's its own animal. And that inherently creates risk, but also opportunity for significant gain. And that is the risk that we as an industry and you as investors have come to accept. The perceived risk, though, that I think my dad is referencing has less to do with the performance of assets and more to do with this perception that the crypto industry reflects the lawlessness, undisciplined behavior, um, unbridled speculation akin to a caricature of the Wild West. And this is the risk that I would like to dispel and believe has been largely overcome with increasing industry maturity. I was having a conversation with a colleague about this very topic and he said, you know, our industry isn't in a state of chaos like the Wild West. Our industry is more analogous to the space race. And that really resonated with me. So John F. Kennedy actually said of the space race, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard. And this is the sentiment I am seeing in the crypto industry today. Blockchain technology attempts to solve previously unsolvable problems. The complexity of the technology and the nascent nature of the regulatory framework requires new and emerging expertise. And the result has been a pouring in of talent and capital and an opportunity to realize the potential of something impactful. This has yielded an increasingly competitive landscape, which in turn has begot innovation and accountability. And as I noted earlier, this has been evident at SALT with the influx of talent that has driven innovation in the areas of technology, compliance, and operations. And we are simply a microcosm for what is happening industry-wide. So I can point to several indicators of industry maturity. So let's dig into these one at a time. Okay. The first one is broader adoption. So from a consumer perspective, despite the crypto winter or bear market or whatever we want to call 2018, uh, we saw a nearly doubling of the amount of individuals who hold crypto assets. A survey published by Forbes suggests that crypto holders are skewing older and more affluent than previously thought. Um, UTXO analysis done by Delphi Digital, which is a great report if you guys haven't seen it, suggests that most crypto holders who held a position longer than five years largely sold off their holdings, partly contributing to the downturn, but clearing the way for new investors seeking interaction with new types of products. From an institutional perspective, traditional financial services and crypto financial services are converging, and we're seeing validation of crypto assets through traditional finance companies either incorporating crypto services or blockchain infrastructure. Institutional adoption also extends to partnerships and service providers for crypto companies. Just in the past 12 months, in my experience in this industry, I personally have seen an increased willingness of vendors and service providers to work with crypto companies. Companies who were saying no to providing services to us 12 months ago are now actively trying to work with us. The next indicator is compliance. 
And I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's not a new topic, but it's worth saying that US-based crypto companies have made significant strides to create risk and compliance programs that are comparable to traditional financial institutions. This includes the robust KYC AML program, customer data protection and privacy standards, SOC compliance, compliance monitoring of blockchain addresses, and dedicated resources to oversee these compliance programs. As our industry attempts to navigate its purpose, which is removing barriers of transferring value, even regulatory barriers, compliance programs, for better or worse, at this stage of our industry maturity, appear to be a necessary step for broader adoption and mitigation of regulatory risk. So insurance. Insurance has been a hot topic as of late because it's a relatively new advancement in our industry, but it's meaningful. The fact that insurance providers are willing to underwrite affordable insurance policies for crypto specific operations is a strong indicator that we as an industry are demonstrating the safety of holding crypto assets. I urge investors to ask critical questions about the specifics of insurance programs, the coverage amounts, the incidents covered, and the claims and payout process and timeline. The good news is that as our industry continues to prove itself, the competition amongst insurance underwriter, underwriters will increase, which will in turn drive down costs. Okay. In our industry is dealing with our own data integrity issues just like any other high volume, highly technical industry. So recognizing these gaps and the dependence on reliable market data to drive participation, there has been a surge in data research companies dedicated to improving the quality of market data. The recent incident of Bitwise calling out CoinMarketCap for overstating trading volumes is a great example of our industry's maturity in this area. Not just because companies like Bitwise are expending resources to conduct due diligence on our industry's leading data providers, but also CoinMarketCap's acceptance and accountability and urgency to address this issue to improve their product. It demonstrates that we are holding ourselves to a higher standard and that our investors will have increasingly accurate sources of information to make informed decisions. Um, scalability. So JP Morgan announced earlier this year that it is investing in its Quorum blockchain infrastructure to facilitate payments in a more efficient manner using its dollar-backed JPM coin. It's currently being piloted with a few institutional clients, but it's promising to revolutionize their payment processing. To realize this potential, though, will require blockchains to dependably support concurrent transactions at a scale that is not yet possible, or at least not yet practiced. The good news is our industry is investing significant resources to solve this problem, and promising solutions are surfacing. The second layer protocol solution, Lightning Network, is perhaps the most exciting advancement in the race for scalability. And I expect we will hear a lot more about this in the months to come. And lastly, what I see as the most exciting indicator of market maturity is the increasing diversification of product <laughs> offerings. Interest-bearing accounts are seeing promising early performance. Futures and options are now available on select exchanges, as is trading on margin. And ETFs are on the near-term horizon. What I have seen it is an industry response to the unique nature of crypto assets and the needs of crypto holders. In crypto lending, for example, our industry, simply offering a crypto-backed US dollar loan does not address all market use cases. And if 2018 has taught us anything, it's that we need products that drive market engagement in both bear and bull markets to combat this volatility. Our industry now offers several ways for investors to participate, either directly through investing in crypto assets, less directly through contributing to capital pipelines for interest-based products, or even indirectly through investing in the growth of crypto companies and projects. These options are allowing for a wider breadth of investor participation, and varying risk appetites. Okay, so if I can summarize a couple of takeaways. I return to the question, is crypto investing risky? So when we empower a company like Charles Schwab to manage our wealth portfolio, we know that there is some risk in the investment strategy, but we don't worry about them losing or mismanaging our money. There are enough responsible companies in the crypto industry today who can provide the same amount of assurance about the handling of crypto assets. I encourage you to seek out reputable companies and ask tough questions about their operations due diligence. With the right companies, you'll be satisfied with the answers you get. And lastly, how can you as investors continue to drive our industry forward? 
Well, we have seen what happens when more resources are made available to our industry. The result is more talent, more innovation, and increasing sophistication that will help us deliver on the potential of crypto and blockchain technology. Everyone wins. So I want to thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak with you today. I hope you enjoy the conference and please stop by our booth to continue the conversation. Thank you.